Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to Ebenezer Baptist Church Worship Experience. We are, we are delighted to have you worship with us. Welcome to our social media audience, to our virtual audience. We give God praise. We hope that you have had a good week this week, and we are glad to have you worship with us today. This is the day which the Lord has made. And we ought to rejoice. We ought to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. 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 Surely this is none other than the house of the Lord. Let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. Amen. If you have breath this morning, praise the Lord. If you're thankful, praise the Lord. If you're happy, praise the Lord. If you got company in your house, praise the Lord. Give God some praise today for all that the Lord has done. Amen. Amen. We got a good crowd here in worship today. Good to see all the Ebenezer folks and uh, coming to give God our best praise. Let's keep everybody lifted up in prayer today as we move forward in our worship service. Keep the Brown family in prayer today. They're traveling on their way to Maryland uh, to, uh, to, uh, to a funeral. And uh, let's keep everyone lifted up, lifted up in prayer today. Sister Bernice Pollard and... Uh, and Sister Annie Walltower celebrating a birthday today, I believe. We want to give her God praise for her. I think she's 102 or 103. 103. And so she's our oldest member in the church. And uh, I always told y'all, if you drink the water at Ebenezer, I guarantee you, you'll get old. Amen. You drink the water, you'll be old and healthy and strong. If you drink the water at Ebenezer. I'm telling you, you will age gracefully in the kingdom of God. So we praise God for uh, her birthday today and for those who will celebrate. Um, also, 
uh, let us just remember that we want to just be, keep everyone really lifted up in prayer, cover each other. Uh, there's a lot of prayer concerns, too many to list, but cover each other. Uh, be a prayer partner for somebody uh, and cover each other in prayer. A lot of sickness. Make sure that uh, the effectual prayers of the righteous, the Bible says, availeth much. <laughs> Amen. So keep praying. Keep the prayer wheel turning. Come on, tell somebody next to you, keep the prayer wheel turning. Come on, say it one more time. Keep the prayer wheel turning. Amen. 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 I want to have a great worship experience today. I just want to have church today and just enjoy the goodness of God in the land of the living and enjoy uh, the, the move of the spirit. I want to thank God for our musical band today and thank Kyle for being Amen. Amen. And uh, today, the, the morning preacher today is none other than our own uh, minister, Sam Campbell, will bring the word today. And, and he's going to bless us. It is good to see uh, Reverend Randy Copeland. He's not preaching, but he's here. And uh, good to see him. Good to see Good to see him in the fellowship. Amen. 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 So let me ask uh, Reverend Copeland to come and to bless us with a word of prayer. And uh, then we'll move right into uh, praise and worship, a couple of selections, and then we'll have the word today. Amen. Let us pray. Most merciful, everlasting God, we thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be in your presence here today. Lord, you woke us up this morning, started us on our way in a right frame of mind to come to worship. We thank you. We thank you, Lord, for bringing us through new mercies we see every day. And so because you give us new mercies, Lord, we want to give you fresh praise, new praise look back over our lives and we think things over we can truly say that we've been blessed so every day that we wake up and we open up our eyes we can see your glory we ought to say thank you thank you Lord for life health and strength thank you Lord for the ability to be able to open up our mouths and give you the glory and the praise thank you Lord for being able to see our families in good health thank you Lord for a roof over our head and food on our table we thank you, Lord, for a new edifice that is coming, Father. And we pray on that. We pray on that. We pray on that, that you will bless it every day that a new brick is being laid down. We pray that you bless it so that when we get into that place, the Holy Spirit has already met us there and is doing what it needs to do in blessing, Lord. We thank you for your people here today. We thank you for Nolani, Lord, who's traveling. We pray that you continue to put your hands on her, Lord. Send the Holy Spirit to protect her and guide her. But open up her mind and her eyes to see your glory over there, Father. We thank you for her family. Continue to bless them, Father. And let them know that she's going to be okay. We thank you, Lord, for this time of worship. These musicians that find it no fault to be here today. We ask that you continue to bless them, Lord. Lead them in the right path. And then we thank you for your people, Father that find it no fault to come here and say thank you Lord because you, they know what you're doing for them and so that because they know that what you're doing for them they give you the glory and the honor and the praise we thank you for this pastor this pastor that has a vision Father I pray that you continue to lead him and guide him in the direction that you want him to go in keep him on the right path Father we pray that in order for him to be on the right path that you bless his family Bless his mother, Father. Continue to heal her, Lord. No weapons formed against her shall prosper. The enemy has no power over her. So we thank you, Lord, for healing her, building her up on every leaning side. And then, Lord, continue to bless him. Give him a word, Lord, that will sanctify your people, that will satisfy your people, but only from you. And then, Lord, for uh, Minister Sam Campbell. Today, Father, no matter what preparation he tried to do. Let him know that the only preparation that he needs is you, Lord. Keep his mind on you. Keep his hand in your hand. Keep his word in your word. Keep his spirit in your spirit. Whatever he needs, Lord, I pray that you bless him with it today. Send us a mighty word, Lord, 
So folks might run out of here crying, what must I do to be saved? Have your way, Lord, in this place today. Send the anointing, for the anointing makes the difference. We pray it today, Father. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. I feel your presence in here already, Father. Thank you, Lord, for this praise and worship team. Thank you, Lord, for the words of glory. Thank you, Lord, for just being the God that you are. And we will give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. We pray this in the matchless, mighty name of Jesus, our Savior, who has risen. And we give your name the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Let my father's children say amen. 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 And amen. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Oh, praise the Lord, everybody. I
face of the Lord. Say, I will remain. I will remain confident. Confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. The Lord is my light and salvation. Who shall I fear? Who shall I be afraid? Be afraid. The Lord. The Lord.
Come on, let's lift up. I will remain. I will remain. Confident in this, I will see the goodness of the Lord. No matter what you're going to remain. I will remain. Confident. Confident in this, I will see the goodness of the Lord. Thank you. thank the praise team for ushering in the spirit this morning. To the pastor of the church, I say thank you. Every young preacher wants to preach a good sermon, want to please God, want to give our best to God, but we also Somewhere deep down inside, we want to impress our pastor, our mentors. <laughs> so my pastor just asked me, he said, what scripture are you coming from today? I said, I'm coming from the 23rd Psalm. He said, the whole 23rd Psalm? <laughs> so y'all pray for me just one more time. <laughs> As I attempt to <laughs> preach this word, Lord, good morning. I just want to say thank you. I promised I would only ask for one thing today. I only get one ask today. And I ask that you be with me. In the name of Jesus, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength, my friend, my strong tower, my refuge, my God, and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 The 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. 
He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The word of God for the people of God. You may be seated. Today's sermon title is trust God's process. Amen. 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 Right now, I know a lot of people are going through things, and I just want to say, trust God's process. I'd like to draw your attention to three points today that I feel will help me to facilitate this message as well as justify my thought process while I attempt to validate a purpose, a divine purpose in trusting in God, trusting in his will, trusting in his way, and trusting in his purpose. The first point will be for us to recognize in order to get ahead, we have to get past our trust issues. The second will be the importance of the role of the shepherd and his job in helping to create trust in us. And finally, that we should rejoice in our trust of God because of the various ways that he supports, nurtures, protects, and blesses us each and every day. Has anyone ever heard the phrase, you just have to trust the process? Well, that's really easy to say, but extremely hard to do. First of all, trusting the process would entail trusting that everything will work out in your favor, even though you can't see the final outcome. Trusting the process also entails trusting that while the process is happening, things in your life will stay in the balance. And in this day and age of uncertainty, treachery, deceit, jealousy, envy, people are unwilling to trust one another, let, al let alone trust the process. And finally, trusting the process would mean trusting who is in charge of the process and their abilities to bring you to your desired outcome. So when someone says just trust the process, there's a lot to consider. Let us also pay attention to the fact that when that phrase is used, it's usually because you found yourself in an uncomfortable or uncompromising position or an arduous task that has kept you bound and stuck in one place for an elongated period of time. Amen. I have to admit something to you because I can't stand up here as the preacher of the hour and fake it. I have trust issues. I do. I don't trust everything I hear, nor do I trust everybody who's telling me. I need credibility. I need to see the proof in your pudding. Show me that you have some expertise. One time I was with a group of my colleagues and we were observing a teacher. And after the observation, we got together and we did a debrief. And everybody pulled out their notebooks except me. And they all went around and said their piece. And when it got to me, I started saying my piece and one of my colleagues stopped me. She said, hold on, Sam, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm giving my feedback. And she said, where's your evidence? I said, well, it, it's, it's all up in my head. It's, it. She said, people don't want to hear your opinion. They want to see the evidence. Whether or not this teacher becomes a teacher is not going to be based on your opinion. We need evidence. 
credibility, expertise. People will say anything nowadays to earn a dollar, right? They'll lie, they'll cheat, they'll rob, steal, even kill. John 10.10, 10, the thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Jesus came so that we could learn to trust him. But instead, we put our trust in mm -hmm. I was in school doing my research, and I was really perplexed one day. And I went to one of my coaches, and I said, look, I've been going through these resources all day, and I just can't seem to find what I'm looking for. And you know what the coach said? Google it. <laughs> that's, that's what we put our trust in nowadays. We put our trust in anything else other than the one who we should be trusting in, and he's God. Don't you know that folks will change the game up on you in a minute? And while you thought everything was on the up and up, they want to switch things up. You're playing by the rules and they're making the rules up as they go along. When you say let's work as a team, they say, no, 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 I'm going to do this my way. But that's not God's way. God honors unity. And without unity, you foster a culture of individualism. And individualism will foster a culture of distrust and jealousy because individuals don't want to see the next individual do better than them. They don't want to see the next individual surpass them, get blessed or be blessed and highly favored. And we end up not trusting anything, especially not the process. But I can say my testimony, I can say with the utmost certainty that I've learned through all my trials. I've learned through all my tribulations, all my failures, and there have been many, as well as successful accomplishments and milestone achievements to trust God's process. And that's, that's not easy. That wasn't an easy road for me to get to that. I had to go through some things before I could start really trusting God's process. God's process has kept me all my life, just like he's kept you all your life. God's process is what brought me to Boston, Massachusetts. God's process brought me to those kids and those children and families down there at the Dudley Street Neighborhood Charter School. God's process brought me to Ebenezer Baptist Church and Pastor Thompson. I never thought I'd become a deacon. I never thought I'd become a minister. I wanted to be a famous preacher, but I can't preach. <laughs> but God's process said, you're going to do it this way. God's process brought me to my wife and my brand new life. God's process will help you get past your trust issues because God's process is about development. Your development, my development, which ends up working on your relationship with him. It's important to trust God's process because when you look back over your life, you come to a revelation that it was him all along who was keeping you shepherding you, protecting you, loving you, caring for you. God's process might be tough, but it's going to be right. It might lead you upside down and backwards. It might lead you over the hill and through the woods. You might be at a job right now that you don't understand why you're there, but God's building you up for something better. Follow the process. Trust the process. You might be in a relationship that just doesn't make sense. He might be preparing you for the one that's to come like he did for me. Amen, Danita. <laughs> hey, I'm a living testimony. As we go through life and its many levels and changes and experience, we can rest assured of two things. There will be good times and there will be bad times. There will be times when the harvest is plenty and there will be times when the harvest is few. There'll be some mountaintop moments as well as some valley moments. Anyone ever have any valley moments? 
find yourself in the valley. Yesterday, everything was fine. Today, you wake up and you're in the valley. I have. Excuse me. Pastor said, if you drink some of the water from Ebenezer, you're going to live long. I was about five years right there. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. For clarity's sake, this passage of scripture associates the valley with being alone and afraid. When we are in the valley, things are dark. We can't predict what's going to happen next. The valley can be a scary place because the valley is the place of the unknown. The valley is the opposite of the mountaintop where you can see everything, where you feel accomplished, where you feel close to God. Martin Luther King Jr. said, I have been to the mountaintop. Moses received the Ten Commandments from where? the mountaintop. Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, and they went high up on a mountaintop where his appearance was immediately transfigured. That's Matthew 17, 1. Those are some mountaintop experiences. But to be in the valley alone and afraid is a much different story. Depression, anxiety, mental health, sickness, cancer, dysfunction, adultery, alcoholism, drug addiction. That's the valley. And we can't judge because we've all been there or we know somebody or we can relate. But the valley is a place that can and does wear you down. That's why I chose this passage of scripture as the backdrop of my text. This passage of scripture will encourage you. This passage of scripture will lift you up. This passage of scripture will speak to your situation. Earlier, I spoke of trusting the process, trusting that things will work out, life would stay in the balance, and trusting who is in charge of the process, which brings us to the subject of the shepherd. David was a shepherd. God chose David to become king and a leader because David loved God. He was humble. He was loyal. He was obedient. And he was a shepherd. Now, that's an important focal point. It is reported that the 23rd Psalm was written before David was king. When he was just a shepherd boy tending the flock writing and singing songs and poems and doing what he did best, serving, making sure that the flock is fed, watching out for the enemy, leading the sheep to safe places, going above and beyond to satisfy and please, giving of oneself, sacrificing both personal and family time, shepherding. A shepherd is a provider. A shepherd is a protector. A shepherd is a caregiver. A shepherd is a leader. A shepherd is trustworthy. I thank God today for all of our pastors and spiritual leaders as you are our shepherds here on earth today. And the Lord knows we need more shepherds now than we ever did. The 23rd Psalm is a psalm that tells of a shepherd. Our shepherd, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's my shepherd. And we ought to trust him because after all David went through, which was he went from shepherd to armor bearer, armor bearer to king's musician, king's musician to the soldier who slayed Goliath. Then he was accepted and respected as a soldier. Then he became a famous soldier. Then on to a famous soldier who was on the run. And after that, he became king. Why? Because he trusted God. And had he not trusted God's process, disaster would have surely followed. What if he had done like you and I would have done and said, no, 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 I'm going to do this my way. What if he would have listened to the crowd? What if he would have ignored God's voice? What if he would have let self-importance guide his thinking? Don't you know the crowd loves me? I'm the most popular Saul has killed thousands, but I have killed tens of thousands. 
self-indulgence or self-exaltation will never get you into the kingdom. God wants you to glorify him first, then he'll exalt you. The Bible says in Matthew 23, 12, and whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. And that he shall humble him, he that humble himself shall be exalted. David was humble, so he got exalted. Trust God's process. He won't lead you astray. He won't let you down. He won't leave you alone. He won't have you without. He loves you. He loves me. He's our shepherd. And it's because of that undying love, commitment, dedication, discernment, and decision making that he instills the trust in us. And we listen and we follow. John 10, 2 through 4 says, The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. Trust God's process. Listen for his voice. Now I'm almost done. Let me tell you why we should rejoice in our trust of God's process. Let's go back to the scripture and then I'm going to take my seat. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. Trust God's process. I like what the NIV version says. It says, the Lord is my shepherd and I lack nothing. You trust God's process, and he's going to tend to you. The shepherd's going to care for you. The shepherd's going to lead you to safe places. The shepherd's going to be there with you in the midnight hour. You shall not want, you'll lack nothing. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Did you know that there's a landmass right now that we call the Middle East? But it used to be called Mesopotamia. Yes, Mesopotamia was surrounded by two rivers, the Tigris and the Euphrates. And while these two rivers were there to supply water to that region of land, they were known to flood. Now, these floods were both uncontrollable as well as unpredictable. And most of the time ended up in catastrophe because they would wash away entire settlements, villages, and budding civilizations before they even had a chance to even build or cultivate, killing hundreds at a time. But that's not the type of waters God is trying to lead you to. Now, you know, we're not talking about real water. We're talking about metaphorically situations that happen in your life, situations that could be considered like floods that come and just wash away everything you're trying to build. Uh, uh God's not trying to lead you to those type of waters. God's trying to lead you to still waters. Amen. Amen. He wants to put some peace in your life. He wants to put some tranquility in your life. He wants to put some satisfaction in your life. Still waters to me represents stability. He wants to put some stability in your life and with stability comes a greater quality of life. Come on now. Still waters, green pastures. Trust God's process because at the end of the day when you get tired, when you're ready to give up, when you can't do no more with your children, where that job has just worn you down, God's going to restore your soul. Come on now, somebody. I don't know about you, but I need God to restore my soul. Sometimes I just get tired. Pastor Thompson's building a church right now. Pastor Thompson, don't worry. Don't worry about the money. Don't worry about the building. Don't worry about it. Don't worry, because he's going to restore your soul. He's going to give you some energy to get back up here and keep on encouraging us. He's going to give you that boost that you need so that you can go home and caretake and come back and caretake for us. God is going to be with you from the beginning to the end. He leadeth me in the pathways of righteousness for his name's sake. You better trust God's process because I didn't put myself here. He put me here. I'm doing this for him. I'm not doing this to glorify Sam. I'm doing this to glorify Jesus. 
And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. If that's not the greatest point, there is none. God is going to be with you tomorrow when you walk into that hospital room. Don't worry. God is going to be with you. You got to go to court and you worried about the sentence. Don't worry. God is going to be with you. Worrying about your finances won't do a thing. God's got you. He's going to be with you. He's walking with you. He's talking with you. He's holding your hand. He's holding you up. Don't worry about your troubles. Don't worry about that. Tomorrow will take care of itself. But today, just know deep down in your heart, God is with you. That makes me feel like no weapon formed against me shall prosper. God is with me. I know the plans I have for you, plans to not to harm you, but to prosper you. God is with you. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismissed. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. Thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Now I want you to get, come with me on this one. Don't think of the rod and the staff as a weapon. Mm -mm. Not in that sense. It's the tool of the shepherd. The rod and the staff had multiple uses. The rod and the staff was used to herd the sheep. Come this way. Go that way. It could be used to ward off the enemy, but that was just one of its uses. Another use it had is that it could become a, a, a tool to dig a ravine from the river away from the river's edge so that the sheep could get water. And be fed without being in danger from crocodiles or anything else that might be at the water's edge. The tool of the shepherd is what the rod and the staff is. Today, our shepherd is the pastor. And the tool, the rod and the staff, is the book. So when you say... Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. What it's really saying is, thy word comforts me. Amen. This word can feed me. This word can ward off the enemy. Amen. Come on. This word can do things that no other word can do. This word can bless me. This word can give me shelter. This word can be my refuge. The rod and the staff is this. This is the word. This is the rod. And this is the staff, so I suggest we all get one and carry it. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Let me tell you why that's important, because God wants your enemies to know you didn't do it. He's doing it. He's, he's building that table right there in front of your enemies. He's not saying you're doing it. He's saying thou, the word says thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. He wants them to know that he's with you. And he wants them to know that he's building it. So you won't be stopped. And finally, and finally, as we come to a close, whew, my cup runneth over. You know what that is? No, I'm sorry. Thou anointest my head with oil. My, thou anointest my head with oil. That's God adding his spiritual touch to it. The anointing is the important part. Once the spiritual peace comes in, that's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will take over. The Holy Spirit is big. The Holy Spirit is large. The Holy Spirit is all-encompassing. That's why the cup runneth over. That's not jewels. That's not money. That's the Holy Spirit working in you, and it just won't stop. It'll make you cry. It'll make you stop. It'll make you, it'll give you revelation. It'll give you understanding you'll be able to move on and keep going and get past your trust issues and, and at the end of the day surely goodness and mercy is going to follow you all the days of your life and when I'm done with this journey here on earth and I'm ready to throw in the towel I don't know about you but I want to dwell in the house of the Lord forever thank you Lord for being my shepherd thank you Lord for tending to me thank you Lord for being there for me
walking with me in my darkest and hardest times, building me up, giving me a little bit of the anointing so that my cup runneth over. Trust God's process because he won't fail you. He won't leave you. He won't forsake you. He'll always be there. Amen. We have been told to trust God's process. No matter what you're going through in life, no matter where you're at in your life, trust God's process. And I can guarantee you, if you trust in God's process, God will bring you out. God would make you safe. God would give you comfort. God will be God in your life. We want to open up the doors of the church today for anybody that is having problems following God's process prayers there for you if you can't follow God's process we open up the doors for you to come and give your life to Christ if there's anybody here that has not committed themselves to the Lord this is the time to do it and if you're standing in the need of prayer we can never close a worship service without prayer we can never close a worship service without offering prayer to somebody that might be standing in the need of prayer. I don't care if you're a member of the church. I don't care if you're not a member. I don't care if you haven't given your life to Christ or if you have. We always need prayer. If you're having problems following the process, and don't be ashamed of that. Everybody falls short. But God is a forgiving God, and he, all we have to do is ask for his forgiveness. If there's anybody that stands in the need of prayer, we open up the altar for you right now. Come give me your hand, but give God your heart. Amen. And we trust that everybody has no problems of following God's process. We want to thank this preacher for this wonderful word. Amen. Amen. Let's give God some glory for him. Come on, give God praise. Amen. 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 If you just need a special prayer today, if you need a special prayer just before we go, if you need God to speak to your life, 
and you need a special prayer today, just come on forward real quick. If you need special prayer today, come on forward. Whoever you are today, you need a special prayer. You need a special prayer today. Come on forward. And, and for those of you who are those of you who are online and you need a special prayer today, you're just going to take a moment just to, to pray for you today. God, our Father, we were instructed today through your word to trust the process. And, oh, God, there are many folks in the kingdom of God who are having doubts and having some questions. There are some folks in the kingdom of God who are wondering if I can trust the process. Oh God, there are some things that are going on in individuals' lives that are stressing, that are causing folks to get weary in the battle. There's some folks that are going through some storms right now, going through some death, going through some bereavement, going through some grief, going through some sorrow. There's some folks that are going through some seasons of transition. There's some folks right now who are going through seasons of depression, seasons of loneliness, seasons of stress and weight and burden and some seasons, God, of transition. But God, today, we're believing by faith that wherever you are in the body of Christ, wherever you are in your transition, God, we are going to trust you. We're going to believe in you, that you are going to bring all things to pass. Hallelujah. You're going to help everyone to get through their situation. Hell, God, we pray today, God, that whatever someone is struggling with today, that you will help them to realize that, God, you are still there. You are still there with a hand held out for somebody to reach out and touch that hand to get through their situation. Oh, God, we are praying, God, for some folks right now who are seriously under the battle of oppression, the battle of the storm, the battle of sickness, looking to recover. And God, we believe by faith today when everything else fails, when there's nothing else we can do, when everything else gives way, we believe by faith today that we can put it all in your hands. And when we put everything in your hands, you can turn little into much. And so, God, we pray today by faith today that every single one of us will have the decision-making skill set to put it all in your hands. Now, God, we're shifting our stress right now. We're shifting our weight right now. We're shifting our issues right now. We're shifting our concerns right now. Right now, we're shifting. We're shifting all of our worries, and we're putting it all in your hands, trusting you, God, to take us through and to bring us out. 
Now, God, anoint us right now. Anoint your children right now. I want you, oh God, to go name by name and house by house on the membership roll and anoint that house. Anoint that person in that house right now. God, I want you to anoint your children today. Anoint us, God, so that we can feel your touch and feel your hand of mercy. Anoint us right now. Anoint us right now so that sickness will be no more and tragedy will be no more. Anoint us right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Anoint us right now. Lift us from our burden state. Anoint us right now. Anoint us right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Bless your people today. Bless your people today. And as we leave this wonderful worship experience today, we pray that we will never, ever leave your presence. To God be the glory for the things that you have done. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory today. We thank you for the word today. We thank God for the message today. And we give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory. Bless us right now. Bless us real good in our messy situations. Bless us real good. Hallelujah. Do it right now in the name of Jesus. Heal us right now in the name of Jesus. Touch us right now in the name of Jesus. Bless our walk, our individual walk. Bless us right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Hold our church together right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Set our souls on fire in the name of Jesus Christ. And remind us, just like Jeremiah, that it's like fire shut up in my bones. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Let the people of God say amen. 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 Have a great week. God bless you.